So here's the WRX. It's a little bit dirty because it's been getting some use. I've been getting up and going skiing. I got the new lights. I got the side skirts done. You saw that I got the seat done. So it's really coming along. Uh, there's no pink left to be found on it anywhere. And I've got the ski racks on. This car, it's an interesting project. Normally what you want to do is you want to get something that's all perfect and you know exactly how you want it and pretty and only the best materials. No, 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 this is a ski car. What do you do with the ski car? Well, you see all this salt and grime and yuck that's on it. And you see that, you know, you got a little bit of body damage. You've seen that before. Um, that's what you want for a ski car that and you want something that's all-wheel drive So I robbed the little Isuzu emblem and got the other emblems on Rex Somebody's like that's not what you want to name a car. It is for my ski car I've been I've been pinned and messed up and t-boned and hit and plowed with all kinds of people that don't know how to drive in the snow and ice This is a perfect ski car. It doesn't come any better. It's a salvage title. The paint's already shot um, it was really cheap, half of market value being a salvage tile and looking bad. But you want to fix it up and make it a little bit nicer. This is the kind of car that you can put together on a budget. It's about a 10 foot car now. Um, it was a 50 foot car before we started, maybe even further out than that. That just means how far away you had to stand in order to have it look respectable. But it's really coming along. There's been so many little scratches and dings and nicks and overspray. I've been going and getting all the overspray too. This had a bunch of overspray all over it. I went back through and touched it up. It's coming along a little bit better every day. Like I say, the projects, the things I'm doing on this, you know, I'm stitching up the seat. I'm not buying new leather seats. I'm getting the cheap side rails because they're just going to get thrashed with all kinds of rocks and salt and crud and dirt and you name it. So we're trying to just get this together on the cheap. Um, my wife and I, we're trying to get into a new place and get a little bit, bit more land and a little bit of room so I can get a shop with a lift. That's going to be awesome. But we're really having to trim down and get skinny, as it were, financially to be able to make it happen. So I'm trying to increase my income, reduce my expenses, and this car is a great way to do that and still be able to ski and get balanced emotionally. In wintertime, you got to have some kind of outlet. I got to have some kind of exercise and skiing is the best way to do that for me. Before even deciding to do the house, I'd already got the passes in the early season so I can get them cheap and get the locals passes. So anyway, I've been doing some skiing and uh, I've been doing some work on the Subaru and here's how it's working out. Dude, where's the camera when you need one? Get all cleaned up, ready to go to town. <laughs> So here's the side skirts, getting ready to put that on, and you see there's nothing there now. Uh, there's just little body clips and things underneath. If I go under here, you can see they're missing from this side. They're present on the other side. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this, but I thought it was kind of interesting. I got these online for 130 bucks. It seemed like the best deal going. I look at the, the bubble wrap, looks like it's been through a sandstorm or something. And it's just really gritty, really dirty. So this will be the driver's side. This is the passenger side. My goodness. <laughs> How do you get bubble wrap that dirty? That's just nuts. Looks like there's some fasteners here. Let's see if we can push those. Rescue them. Can somebody use this as bedding on a desert camping trip or something? So, screw this. Literally. That's what we got to put this on with is just some black screws. There's supposed to, supposed to be uh, little clips along here that clip into these holes, and there aren't any. So, I guess we're just going to screw it on. This car's in rough shape. I mean, it's a salvage title. It's got 200,000 miles on it. The interior's a little torn up. The outside's a mess. 
burns a little oil so this isn't a TLC kind of a car this is a get her done kind of car I gotta tell you I'm happy with these the screws in the kit and the lack of instructions was terrible I had to wind up putting a screw in here and I wound up pulling it up really tight and then pegging it up here it ripped out and another there I use a stainless steel. Stainless, it's black. What are you talking about? Yeah, stainless steel screws. Peg it in. This one's a little tight at the base there. I use screws like this. I went back and painted them with low gloss engine paint. You see them pegged all the way around the bottom. So I went across the bottom first. It's actually a pretty good little design. It's even got the cutout uh, for service. You can see where the jack would go right there somewhat factory but the holes don't line up at all the screws aren't self tapping so I just kind of freestyled it and I like it I think it looks good I think it looks pretty legitimate I've got the blacked out rim so I'm just gonna leave it black I think it looks good that way you have to let me know what you think in the comments I also went through and did some work on the spare tire area I'm real big on being prepared so I built this. You can tell that that's not factory. That's just a washer welded to a bolt. You know those bolts that have a washer that just kind of floats there, like a factory type bolt. Just the M1. Let's see, M8 by 125. So I got this great big washer that's from a Ford Radius arm. That fits pretty good. And then I just welded washers together. Make the rest of it work. So the floating washer, I welded to a little bit bigger washer, and that one, you see the four welds, bang, bang, bang. And then the bigger washer I welded onto the radius arm, pushing. I don't know what this other washer was even from, but it works really well. There's a whole bunch of junk in here that was rattling and making noise, so I cleaned it out, used some simple green, got everything just really nice and clean. This car's got a funky cigarette smell to it, so. I use some of my hunting anti-odor spray. You know, I don't know if it's going to work on smoke or not. It works really well on body odor, I know that. I'm going to spray the headliner down pretty good. Smoke rises, gets into that. I asked the guy, I'm on my way to go look at this car. I'm really debating about it. I was uh, looking at another car uh, near the capital city. and. It was just so bad. The guy was so dishonest and such a liar. And then I get with this guy on the phone. I'm like, well, I don't want to waste all this, you know, driving an hour to get there. Maybe I'll just keep going, see if there's another one I can look at. And so I call this guy up. I'm like, does it smell like cigarette smoke? Is the seat torn? You know, what's the status on this car? <clears throat> Is it a salvage title? He's like, well, the seat's got a little tear in it. Um, I don't know anything about the smoke. I had ashes in the ashtray for crying out loud. There's ashes all over the center console. And he smokes. So you tell me. You do the math. Uh, but anyway, here's the little tear in the seat. He said, ask, is any of the foam gone? He's like, no, none of the foam's gone. <laughs> right. There's still enough there. I can still get that sewn up and look good. But anyway, car's coming along. It's looking better all the time. Look at this door handle. You got all this uh, dirt and grit and scratches and stuff. So we're going to use a magic dry erase. This is on that new Subaru. Somewhat new to me. Go ahead, whenever you're ready. So we got Mrs. Brian's Mobile One. She's just going nuts with the magic erase. You should hear her just giggling as she's doing this. <laughs> She's a big fan. She's all anything like this. She'll run and grab these things and works magic with them. Apt name. So just with just with the little you've done, we get in here and look again, and you can still see a little bit back in here, but that for the most part it's just gone. Okay. You just don't even see it. It looks great. That was just the gloss water. has been restored to the paint. Now, what were you saying it says on the package about using it on cars? I thought it said not to use it on cars, but it works great, so... Yeah, we've had tremendous result using it on cars and boats. This one was every bit as bad. This is where the child seat was, or access to the kid in the child seat. And when you look at it, it just looks great. It looks like new. 
So zooming out and looking at the car, it's actually looking pretty respectable now. We got the side skirt, we get these things cleaned. I've got this nasty dent to contend with. It's like some kind of blackhead or zit on a white car. But it's really coming along. The back deck lid's looking a lot better. It's all glossed up and magic erasered. Been going over the rear bumper with just touch up paint. I've been touching up all the little spots. I got little scratches and stuff here. This looked like somebody shot it with a shotgun. It still does a little bit, but I've got all the big ones. So I've been working on the car, getting it all cleaned up. Got all the window tint off the side windows, past safety inspection, and we're looking great. Speaking of looking great, I've actually got a little shine here going on. It used to be everything was all flat and dull like this. And I've buffed the top of it out so that I got a little shine on the grill. You can see the little body lines now. I used to not be able to see that. Got rid of the pink on the radio. That was easy. Just change the settings. That's probably one of the easier things that I did. I went through and vacuumed and detailed the insides. I uh, did touch up on the doors. There's a whole bunch of chips on the, each of the doors. There's a cowboy and a cowgirl that had it before. I don't know what kind of metal they had on their pants and belt, but it really took a toll on the paint. This thing's perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for. But like I say, I want to make it look nice at about 10 feet away. You know, I don't want it to be some kind of hoopty looking car. I want it to be presentable. I want it to be reliable. And I want to be able to get my skis up there securely as well as myself. So Subaru, great car to do it. Uh, WRX, even better. You can see I've got it set up with the Thule ski racks. Uh, made in Sweden, which is fun. Uh, what I did is I picked these up. These are brand new. Uh, they've got locks on the rack to lock it to the vehicle and then also locks to secure your skis in there. Uh, now what I didn't have is I didn't have any uh, Subaru factory crossbars. You can see that these look factory and they are. They fit something else. I met a guy up in uh, Park City who had a Subaru and he had some floor mats. I got the floor mats, I got the crossbars and everything for like 20 bucks. So. See, so here's the uh, factory Subaru mats that he had for it. They're a lot better than the junk that was in there and a lot better than just, you know, carpet that shot. So, met up with him, uh, a guy by the name of Mark, and got these, brought them home, and then I found out, you know, they're shaped right, but not quite right. So what I did is I wrapped it in electrical tape until it was fat enough, and then just cranked them on there. And they are tight. You can shake the whole car and they're not going anywhere so it's just awesome cruising along get on the gas it sounds like this give a real heartfelt thank you to the viewers that have been subscribing and watching my videos I couldn't do this without you I mean I just really love having these projects and videos and being able to share them with people who want to see them thanks for the request for the Subaru videos I'm happy to oblige and uh, love you